The ride from LAX to MCRD did not take very long, seeing that they are practically joined at the hip. The bus came to a screeching halt, and at the sound of the air brakes being released was like that of a starter's pistol at a track meet. That's when the shit hit the fan. The bus door swung open, and the DI yelled loudly, Eyeballs! That was the command to look and pay attention to what the drill instructor had to say. He loudly verbalized, There are yellow footprints on the pavement outside. You will fall into those footprints from front to back. You will be fast and orderly. Do you understand? Everybody in unison yelled, Sir, yes, sir! Drill instructor screamed, Get off my bus! Everybody, Sir, yes, sir! This was the beginning of asses and elbows that would officially mark the start of hell. The yellow footprints were legendary. Each Marine recruit were already aware of the iconic prints. Every Marine who went before us stood in the yellow footprints. Once every recruit was standing in a set of footprints, we were given a quick instruction on the position of attention. We were marched into the Bay Area with phones lined up on the wall. We were given instruction to call home and let our respective families know we made it there safely. To the right of each phone was a laminated message in which we read after the other party answered the phone. There was no, I miss you, I love you, how's Aunt Betty doing? <laughs> it was carefully scripted to let your family know that you made it safe, but also it sent a message to each recruit to let him and her to know that she and he now belongs to the Marine Corps. It was also designed to prevent a recruit from sobbing to a family member about wanting to quit and go home. All Marine recruits may it be Paris Island or San Diego, are purposely processed at night. During this time period, it was chaos in the first order. We inventoried our civilian clothes and items turned in for storage. We went through processing, haircuts, uniform and gear issuance, and had instructional class on Article 86 of the UCMJ governing harassment and hazing. During the issuance of our military uniforms, equipment, and gear on command, we had to hold up each item to confirm the issue. Once confirmed, we were then instructed to place the item in our sea bag. This process went on for 36 straight hours. Those 36 hours were grueling. The DIs herded us around like cattle. You don't sleep shuffling us from one room to another for different reasons. The U.S. government was clearly putting their brand on us, which was GI, government issue. They could have presented us with two options. Option number one, spend 36 minutes with the sexiest woman alive, or option number two, 36 minutes of sleep. I think most of us at that time would have fallen asleep before the DI finished the options. I've never experienced such a state of exhaustion in my life. You become so tired you feel your body temperature increase. You become physically and mentally exhausted. You feel as though you want to vomit. For some, hallucination sets in. The lack of sleep is what I refer to as a dumb drug. It plays a critical role in your ability to think, learn, and reason. It impairs attention, alertness, concentration, and problem solving. Yet, those 36 hours, you don't have time to overdose on dumb. Not without the DI on your butt. It adds to anxiety and depression. Each is a tool in which the DIs will use to emotionally and physically break a new recruit down and rebuild him or her into the greatest warrior the world has to offer. It is also known truth that Marines boot camp is by far the hardest of any U.S. standard military training. If anyone says different, you just ask them if they finished out their contract with their respective branch of service, and if they wanted to join the Marine Corps, 
if they would be required to go through Marine Corps boot camp, the answer would be a resounding yes. A Marine would not have to go through another branch of services boot camp. The reason is also obvious. Once we were ushered through the maze of hell, we were marched over to the reception barracks. It was time to sleep. I was sleeping before my head crashed into the pillow. The next morning, the alarm went off. It was time to wake up. Our gracious hosts, the D.I.s, began throwing metal trash cans, shaking and flipping over racks with us in it, screaming things that would make the Pope blush. They were pounding on anything and everything that could make noise. We didn't have watches. I'm sure we only slept for a couple of hours. We all found ourselves standing in the showers. There'd be six recruits standing under one shower head. There was no time to be shy. You didn't know who you were sharing a shower with. Even if someone enjoyed the up and close personal experience, thank God it didn't last long. I remember my first shower being three seconds in duration. It was so quick, I don't think the water even had time to get wet. One thing was for certain, when we were all standing online, I noticed we all must have shopped at the same store just hours before because we were all dressed in the same uniforms. I was so tired, I didn't even remember it. We spent the morning policing and cleaning the head. That's bathroom for civilians and the squad bay. Once our living quarters were squared away, the DI marched us over to the mess hall. I could not wait until we were going to sit down and have our first delightful meal on the U.S. government. I'm sure the food would have been good, but we didn't have a chance to taste it. My first meal was about as long as my shower. I'm not joking. As soon as your butt touched the chair, chair the D.I.s were screaming at you to get up and to get out. We drank our milk so fast, most of it was running down the front of our uniform. On the way there, back to the reception's barracks, I heard a voice call out, Bill, Bill. There was only one person in all of California who knew me by the name of Bill. It was my friend, Dan Johnson Harrington. We both had worked in radio broadcasting together before joining the Marine Corps. He was finishing up boot camp and I was just starting. After I survived boot camp, he asked me, Bill, didn't you hear me call you? I confirmed that I had, but told him I was too disciplined to respond. <laughs> Truth is, I was too scared. The last thing I wanted to do was stand out. The DIs would be all over me, like a swarm of psychotic bumblebees. It was good to hear a friendly voice. Those seconds confirmed Dan was close to becoming a United States Marine. I never doubted it because Dan was a Marine's Marine. He was a badass. His voice inspired me to meet the challenges that would await. Dan didn't go quietly into the night. More on him later. I knew it would be harder for me because I was 27 years old and out of shape, but I had the heart of a lion. Once we had returned to the reception barracks, that lion turned into a domesticated cat. I could have just laid down and whined. The entire barracks was trashed. Every bunk bed in that squad bay was flipped over. The mattresses were spilled all over the floor. Laundry soap, sand, towels, foot lockers tossed everywhere. It looked like a hurricane went through it. You were lucky if you got back your own gear and issue. It was chaotic. The DIs began screaming while running up to you, getting into your face, launching saliva on you from yelling all the while we were trying to get the place back in order. We danced to fuck fuck games the entire time we were assigned to the reception barracks. I was confused. Even though I knew receiving was preparing us for training, I had actually thought it was our training. I had thought we already started boot camp, and these were our drill instructors. Um, just before tap sounded, would mark the end of another day in hell. One of the DIs announced, Girls, 
Tomorrow you'll be starting training day one, and you'll meet your drill instructors. I began thinking, what the hell? You mean this whole week was for nothing? I was too tired to concern myself with it. I'll just sleep and see what tomorrow brings. You must work hard to strengthen your body, your spirit, and your mind. Be proud of yourself and the uniform you wear. Above all else, never quit or give up. We offer you the challenge of recruit training and the opportunity to earn the title, United States Marine.